Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate everyone that clicked on this video today. We're going to talk about something that isn't as flashy. It's not some sort of creative effect, the usual type of videos I do, but it's something that's going to save you time. It's going to save you money and it's going to just make you better at editing as a whole. And this is how to edit faster. Now I've actually made a few videos like this in the past, but today I want to talk about three key things that I think a lot of people may struggle with. And I also want to include tips that can help anyone from beginner, intermediate, advanced. If there's anything you can take away from this video that can help in one tiny way that tiny little change to your workflow could save so much time so let's go ahead and get right into it we're gonna talk about my workflow how I set up a music video how I organize it and how I try and do it as fast as possible and then we're also gonna talk about something like creating proxies something that I know a lot of people are intimidated by a lot of people are confused and a lot of people are not utilizing and then the last thing we're gonna talk about is my render settings because I get asked that a lot so first off here what I recommend you do is you take all of the clips that you have that you're ready to edit and you place them in the timeline like like this now normally I would go to my file explorer I'd open up whatever I have here um, here's an external these were already placed into different little uh, folders for me so what I did was instead of having to show you me going into each folder and dragging it in I already did that beforehand but find all your footage drag it into your timeline so you have it all laid out and the next thing you're gonna want to do is start organizing these clips and this is something that not a lot of people do whenever they first start out they'll throw it all in there they'll maybe do some kind of brief organization but they don't really go in depth this is the point in your edit where you need to take your time you need to organize it so that you can save time down the road taking those extra 30 minutes to clean things up beforehand and have everything where you know it is, is super essential and it can save you hours down the road so what I recommend you do is you start from the beginning you check out all the clips that you have here now if you can't even preview these clips maybe you're working with 4k 5k 6k maybe some sort of red clips um, then go ahead and skip to the proxy part of this video first because that'll help you preview this and actually be able to play it back now a lot of you may know about this but for those of you that don't you can actually right click on a clip and go to label and you can actually change the color of these clips to anything you like and this is super useful make sure you're utilizing this especially for music videos so my little kind of color code that I have you don't have to use mine but I like to use all I like to label all of my b-roll clips this mango color it sticks out it's easy to see usually I'll keep my normal performance performance scenes this default um, I think it's called iris color other than that if there's something specific like maybe uh, these this beginning section here is an intro what I can do is select all these right click label and then let's go for something like dark blue so I know that blue is my intro clip so scrolling through here we have some b-roll some cutaway shots what you can do is select these right click label I go with mango for all of my b-roll and just keep going down the timeline and doing this performance performance anytime where they're mouthing the words that's all performance shots we're gonna sync that with the music once we have these all labeled and organized so here is some more b-roll that we got going on so I'm gonna just select these right click label mango here's where the green screen shots start so all of this here is going to be mango and then for my green screen shots let's go ahead and see how far in we have these these are all going to just be labeled green so I use green for green screen obviously and here's what this is looking like so far so we have our intro clips we have our mango b-roll let's go ahead and just put these by the other b-roll this normal default color is going to be my performance shots and then we have our green screen shots so that's step one use your colors labeling is very important for when you're actually looking around in the timeline you have very complex timelines I'm gonna put some screenshots here some timelines of things I worked on and you'll be able to tell with up to 40 video layers so many audio layers labeling is super essential for my workflow and just for knowing where things are a lot of people you may already know the labeling trick you may do this but what you may start doing is just slide these all over in the timeline and then just start syncing your audio to your performance scenes there I'm telling you there's one more step here this is the main thing in the title that I wanted to get across this number one tip that I have and that is using folders in your bin over here using bins so you have everything labeled but color code alone once you start mixing and matching pulling things in it's starting it's going to start to get messy again it's going to start to get jumbled and you may start to lose clips somewhere in your timeline so one great workaround for that is you can actually take this box you see on the blue line here where we have this little barrier you can drag this up just to show you your clips and this is just the normal project bin where all of my imported clips are if we scroll to the bottom here you may actually need to bend this up a little bit more maybe pull it out or until you can see this gray space right click in this gray space and click new bin and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a bin for each of these labeled clips so I'm gonna make an intro bin 
I'm going to make a performance scene bin. And you may even want to make a performance scene for one artist. And if there's a feature, make it for the second artist. B-roll and then a green screen folder. So we'll go to new item. So we'll go to new bin and we'll name this green screen. And now since we already have this all labeled, it's pretty easy to put them in our bins. Let's go ahead and resize this window so we can have our normal timeline. If things get a little weird, you can just go up to window, workspaces, and then just reset to save layout. That'll just reset everything to how you normally had it. So these blue clips, we already labeled it. This is our intro clips. So scroll down here, find our intro bin, select and just drag them to where it's highlighting the entire square. If you put it here, it's just gonna drop them in the project bin. You wanna highlight the square, drop it in there. Now we have seven items in our intro. So now if you get any, if you lose track of any of these in the timeline, you can just pop into the actual bin here and then you can double click and use this media source browser. This is super useful as well. You may wanna do this at the beginning before you label. A lot of people may like it that way. But this in particular, you can see the full clip, but instead of having to kind of zoom in in the timeline, make a cut, make a cut for the part you want, you can just double click on the clip in the bin, find the part that you like. So maybe right here, you can click I on your keyboard or in, go to where you wanna cut, click O, and then you can drag in. If you drag in like this, you'll drag in the video and the audio, or if you just click and drag this little um, video only, you can just drag in the video. So now instead of, ha instead of having to make those cuts in the timeline, instead of having to search when everything gets really hectic, it's all here in your media source browser and that's gonna save you a huge amount of time. You can even do that just by double clicking in the timeline, it'll pop into your source here and then you can find the specific part you want. So maybe, so maybe you want this part right here, you click I, you click O, automatically resize that clip for the section that you wanted. So make sure you use that to your advantage. It's gonna help you, I promise. I know a lot of people don't use the media source browser. They don't use bins. You already have folders in your file structure before you drag them into your timeline. You can even just drag the specific folders in here and it'll already be bin. So it depends on if you wanna do the organizing in the file structure or in the way I'm showing it to you. It's gonna be the same either way. So let's do it with the B-roll, select all the mango clips drop them in B-roll, and then we'll select all the green screen and drop them in green screen. All right, so we are all organized, easy as that. That's how I go about setting up my workflow to begin a music video or any kind of video edit. I always label my footage, I always put them in labeled bins, so if I can't find it in the timeline, I can pop into a bin, search through here. If I wanna find a specific part in here, I can double click it and I can click I and O to cut out the part I want without having to zoom in here, use the cut button, and click and try and cut these clips while I'm working. So next you want to sync your performance scenes to the audio. The way I go about doing that is I'll go ahead and grab all of my performance scenes here. So now drag this above our main audio source here, your master file or the main audio file. You wanna place this in an audio layer below. And I wanna give you one great tip that's gonna help you a lot um, before we sync this. What you can do is for a lot of you that are going into crazy edits, you need a lot of video layers. For someone that's doing like a vlog where you're not gonna need a lot of overlays, this may not apply, but if you're gonna need a lot of audio layers and video layer, you can actually drag this main timeline part up until you see this gray space here. You can right click and you can go to add tracks. So you know you're gonna do a lot of video editing, a lot of overlays, a lot of things in different layers for the video or the audio. I can just add in 10 video tracks, 10 audio tracks, however you may need. Click OK and bam, now we have all the room we need. So now we don't need to drag it down here to kind of automatically add it. So let's drag this audio track next to our mastered file so we can begin syncing. Go ahead and select both of them. So just click and drag, right click and then go to synchronize. And then you can go ahead and click OK and it's gonna go ahead and process it. Now this really depends on your audio. Sometimes it may not work. In this case, you'll see it automatically popped over. It automatically worked. So what we can do, if I resize my workspace here, if I mute this, if I mute the actual red clip audio, which is our bad audio, our performance audio, now this video is going to be synced up with this normal audio if I play it. So you'll see his lips are now synced with the song and you can just repeat those steps with all your other performance scenes. Now, if there's a moment where one of the audio files isn't synced with your main master, if it says sync error, this is something that you're probably gonna run into and you're gonna have to do it by eye. 
The way I try and do that is kind of difficult, but I'll try and find a point in the song where it's pretty easy to pause. So maybe a beat drop. You can even drag these little layers up to see these waveforms better. And the way I'm zooming in, I'm clicking Control and Alt and using my mouse wheel just to move in and out on the timeline. If you're trying to edit everything like this, it's gonna be nearly impossible. You need to be zooming in and out you can also click and drag this to zoom in and out, but I'm just using Control Alt, Control Alt, and the mouse wheel. Zoom in, view those waveforms, and like I said, you can you can expand these to see the waveforms a lot easier. Okay, guys, so once you've repeated those steps with the syncing and just placing the new one in a new video layer, it should look something like this. Now, the way that I go about placing my performance scenes in is since these are all synced up, if I actually hide any of these layers, it'll show the next clip everything's still synced. So if I play here, this will be synced. It's synced, if I hide that, if I hide this top layer, we'll see our next one. If I hide that, we'll see our bottom one. This one is still synced with the audio as well. So you can just use the little hide layer buttons here, clicking the eyes to kind of flip a switch and check out each performance scene and then cut in the piece that you like best. What I like to do is I select all of these performance scenes, make sure that you're not moving them around because that'll off sync them, select them all, Click and then carefully drag up. You'll see that the little arrows are kind of split like that. That's showing that it's still synced. It's just moving in a video layer up. You can move that up. Maybe if you want more room, drag it in two. So you have two blank video layers here. And that's basically going to be where your main um, editing composition is. We'll pause it there, control K, and then we'll just drag that down. So now if I hide all of these performance layers, whenever I'm just going to be watching my main sequence here, Here's one scene. Let's bring let's bring in another scene, maybe this one. Control K. Drag a bit. Control K. Drag this into video layer 1. Hide this. So now you'll see our scene switch. So And that's how you can switch from one performance scene to the next without losing any syncing. Find the clip that you want. Drag that down. Hide it again. And always be showing your video layer 1 or 2 your main little comp sequence. And that's how we can keep switching from performance scene to performance scene. So you could do the whole performance first um, if you want to get that all the way, and then you can drag in your B-roll. You may not even need to have them in the timeline here all laid out. You could even just go and say you want to place a B-roll clip um, over top into this next into this next spot. Double click into your B-roll folder, find one that you like. So we'll double click here. We'll use our little source browser to find the exact spot from the clip that we want. It'll be right here. Click I and then click O, drag the video into here. So now we'll play that out. Here's my main done sequence. So you'll see these five layers that are showing, this is the actual edit. Everything here that's hidden, these are little pop-in shots. So say we're doing a revision and we wanna change one scene, I can go to the exact spot where they wanna change the scene. And since these are all synced, I can just show layer and say, okay, we'll place it with this little clip. Play it, cut it in, and then just drag it over top. So now we have a different scene in that spot. Now, once you're ready to render everything, what I like to do is just select everything that's actually showing. These should all be hidden because these are just your pop-in little performance scenes. These are all hidden layers. You'll see there's so much of them just because of all the just because of all the performance scenes in here. These are all synced up. Grab everything that's showing, so select all this as well as your main master file. I like to just click control C to copy it, and then I'll just open up a new sequence with the same exact setting. So I'll go to file new sequence and this is the same sequence settings i use 1080p 24 frames per second and then i just control v to paste it so now and then you can just hide any audio layers from these clips that may be here hide all the audio layers except for your master which is this green one so now you have the entire edited sequence without any of the craziness over top and then you can render that out so that is my main workflow i showed you how to sequence everything once you've sequenced everything once you've sequenced it and placed the b-roll in you can add any effects 
go through my other videos, find out some cool effects. You can pimp out your videos that way and effects as you go or after you sequence everything, whatever you prefer, it's all up to you guys. I'm not saying that this way is the perfect way, the way you should be doing it. I'm just saying this is the way that I like to do it. It helps me work faster. So if it helps me, hopefully it can help some of you guys. I know a lot of you are beginners and this is going to help you a lot because it's helped me a lot. This is something that I kind of learned over like two years of working and just being kind of slow with editing, taking so long working overnights and just trying to chop down those hours it takes, especially with music videos. If you're trying to do music videos and you're putting the time in, you're editing, putting a lot of VFX into it, you need to learn things like these to save you time, save you money, and just overall improve your health and your well-being, especially if you do this for a living because sitting for 12 hours straight is not healthy. Hopefully this helps guys. Anyways, leave a like if you did enjoy, comment what you'd like to see next. This was a more technical thing, but it's something that I think you guys need to hear. We're going to get back to our normal schedule of really cool VFX, effects, breakdowns, things like that. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.